This is K-Pop Sunday brought to you by K-Pop Sunday before you have to go back to work on Monday. We are your hosts, Onyx, Min, and JR. The spooky season has begun and we are and we're closing in on Halloween. So we decided that today shall be the day where we discuss our favorite spooky themed songs and we will be giving you the briefest briefest rundown on the kings of Halloween. And we'll also be discussing some of the more classic K-pop Halloween song. So let us start off with the boys of the spookening Vix. Back in episode 18, we talked about the queens of summer. So now let's talk about the kings of Halloween. If you're a longtime K-pop fan, you probably already know who they are. We're talking about Vix, who are also known as the concept idols. They were not the concept idols at debut. Vix debuted in 2012 with the track Superhero. And at the time, it looked like they were just going to be a normal boy group. They didn't really have a strong concept. And then Rock Your Body came out later that year. And while it did have a video game theme, it wasn't really anything strange. However, in 2013, they released On and On. On and On was very different because the stylings were of vampires in space. Yes, you heard that right, vampires in space. And these aren't your normal vampires. So first of all, they were wearing suits for a lot of the music video and their eye makeup was supposed to look like leaves sort of like trailing off. And it was very pretty, very hard to replicate too. And one of the members, N, actually tried to imitate it and it looked very strange. It was just very pretty though. However, the main focal point were the contact lenses. Now, colored contacts have been in K-pop since first generation. However, these contacts were different because they were basically contacts for special effects. They were this yellow, green, sort of strange looking contacts. And they didn't just wear them in the music video, they also wore them on stage. And at the time, that was very strange not really allowed, but Vix, you know, sort of opened the door for that. And this was the first time they were called concept idols because they had a very strong concept and it was very different. They had a fresh take on an old idea. However, they later became associated as being the kings of Halloween because that year they had also released Hide, which was a very dark music video with dark makeup. They were in a dark castle, also in a dark forest, and basically them changing from being charming with a girl to basically trying to harm her. However, nothing scary came about for the next two promotions. Great You was very nice, Only You also very nice. However, later in the year, they came out with Voodoo Doll. Voodoo Doll is the darkest music video of theirs, but it's also probably one of the darkest music videos in the history of K-pop. It depicts gore, torture, pretty much every nasty, scary thing that you could think of condensed into one little music video. And because of that, it has the normal music video, but then they also have a clean version where it takes out a lot of the scary elements. This led to them actually receiving number one, but this sort of cemented in people's minds how good Vix could be with concepts. And the last of the music videos that really falls under this Halloween horror genre that I'm going to be discussing is Error. Now, Error is basically a love story with a cyborg. However, it's not really scary. It's more along the lines of sad. Now, the reason why I'm counting it as scary and for Halloween is because many people have a phobia of animatronics. And this sort of falls in there, especially since there are certain parts of the music video where you see the Vix members, where you see their heads, but then their bodies are gone and they're basically robots instead. Due to it being related to an actual phobia, that is why I'm considering it under their main canon for Halloween. And it was these three tracks that really cemented them as being concept idols and the kings of Halloween. Now, let's talk about some Halloween classics that pretty much every K-pop fan knows about, or if they think about Halloween, they think about these tracks. So the first one I want to mention is EXO's Wolf, which came out in 2013. And as you can guess by the title, it's about werewolves. The second one I want to mention came out in 2015. It's Shiny's classic, Married to the Music, which is basically a Halloween party gone awry. 
third one is BTS's 2016 track, Blood, Sweat, and Tears, which is hauntingly beautiful, and it's complete with an organ piece. And I believe that's the only one on my list that has like a little bit of a creepy organ sound to it. Number four is Peekaboo by Red Velvet, which came out in 2016. It is a favorite of many fans because they're basically female serial killers. The last one I want to mention as being a classic, which K-pop fans frequently bring up, is Dreamcatcher's 2017 track Chase Me, which is about a haunting and it has a lot of similarities to The Shining, including a man with an axe going through a door. It also has a sequel called Good Night, so if you're into ghosts, that's a good one. So now that we have those five tracks out of the way, let's talk about some personal favorites. Min? My first Halloween song pick would be Grace's Trick or Treat. It's very on the nose, but it has been my favorite Halloween type song since it came out back in 2016. And I've been like, I need to cover this and then just never covered it because I don't feel like my video would end up looking good enough. I will cover it at some point. Not this year though, I'm busy. (laughs) But yeah, I just, I love the song. I love how kind of distorted it sounds, like... It's almost a song that needs to be played on, like, a car's blown-out subwoofer at, like, 2 a.m. in some abandoned parking lot. I don't know, it just kind of sounds a bit rough, and I love it. Grace also has a second Halloween-themed song called Zombie High, but to me, Trick or Treat is definitely her best one of the Halloween songs she has made. JR, what about you? So the song I'm going to start off with is Bounce by Boyfriend. And I think it's a really cool concept. I'm pretty sure either the album is called Boyfriend in Wonderland or the music video starts out by saying Boyfriend in Wonderland. So obviously it's a take on Alice in Wonderland. And the song itself starts off very strong with horn. So already I'm on board. But that being said, for having come out in 2015, it sounds quite a bit older than that and that's not necessarily bad but it doesn't feel especially groundbreaking because of that and it's kind of more like a song that would have come out in the late 2000s maybe but it's still it's still pretty catchy so I suggest at least taking a look at it. The music video is really intense and the sets are super elaborate and the costumes are very detailed and I think it's just really well done in my opinion and I can appreciate the effort that was put into it. And I just, I feel like Boyfriend should have had more love when they were a thing. But, you know. Yeah. Starship didn't do much for them. (laughs) So here we are. And they are disbanded. Oof. But yeah. What about you, Onyx? What's your first pick? So my first one came out in 2018 by TRCNG, which is basically like they're the little brother group of BAP. So of course, long acronym. It's called Wolf Baby. And it's basically a cute MV with teenage werewolves getting up to some shenanigans. Like people lose body parts such as teeth, hands, and nails. You know, just a heads up in case that kind of stuff freaks you out. But then they regrow them back and they're all giggly about it. Usually like with werewolf stories, it's like something scary. But this was just, hey, we are all werewolves. Let's have a funny time together. Cute. So... That was something cute before I go to scary stuff. (laughs) So Min, how about you? I absolutely love J Park's demon. It's from 2011 when he was fresh off 2pm and he was oh so young. If you look at pictures of J Park today and J Park in 2011, he was so young. Such a small child. (laughs) The music video for Demon is almost more of a dance performance than a music video, but there are some like artistic demons showing up and the female lead is a quote-unquote demon who is pretty much just a really pretty girl trying to seduce Che, but you know, (laughs) it's close enough. And I have a big nostalgia for the song, and the song is also pretty much completely in English, so that is fun. And yeah, if you haven't heard really old J Park songs, Demon is one of the ones you should listen to. That and Abandoned, they're both great. He's come a long way with his music. (laughs) Yeah, he has definitely found his personal style, for better or for worse, since then. He probably also has a lot more creative freedom now than back then. Oh yeah, definitely. 
My next pick is Bad by Infinite. I got into K-pop in 2015 and the song came out in 2015. And this song is what propelled me to be an in-spirit. Can you, did I, I don't think you could use propel that way. <laughs> can <Bye>. I? <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. I'm the English teacher here. I say it's okay. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> It's quite a bit different from their first few years of music, but it if they're one of those ones, I feel like it's been a natural progression into what their sound is like now. And I just, I really love the song. It's super catchy. It's got this really great orchestral feel from the strings, but there's a really great backing beat that keeps everything really upbeat. And then there's this really great pre-chorus-y type thing where it all slows down and it's just it's perfection. I love it. There's also like the synth sound in the back and it works super well. The music video is really great too. I feel like it is a bit more psychological than straight up scary or something like that. There are a few like almost jump scares, but it's not even a jump scare because you don't like fly back out of your seat or something like that. But it's definitely more psychological than actually scary. There's no gore or anything. But yeah, the color palette is really cool. I feel like it's not often used in quote unquote horror settings. It's hot pink, electric blue, and purple, but it really works with the whole set and the whole idea of what's going on. And I don't really want to go too far into the video because I want you guys to look it up and see for yourself, but it's a really cool video. And they have a 360 version, which you can only watch, I think, on a phone. But that's another fun little tidbit about it. So my second one I want to talk about is Beast Shadow from back in 2013, when it was like their glory days, like really high, like, ooh, everyone loves Beast. Because it's not an upbeat or happy track, like other tracks that are on our list, but it's the one that sounds of like longing. And it does a good job of making like decay and destruction in the music video look really beautiful. Beautiful. And sometimes we're going to have to do a deep dive on this whole music video because it does have a storyline. If you're looking for just something very pretty, but sad, but dark, that's a good one. That is a good one. I think it's my favorite Beast track. It's either that or Shock. Those two are like my back and forth favorites. Mm -hmm. They have really good early stuff. I think mine is Breathe or Assume. I hate that it has two oh, names. Oh, oh. They're basically the same gotcha, thing. Gotcha. Oh, that Assume. I love the dance to that. The dance is wonderful. I really like Ribbon, which I think again came out in 2015. I have like very strong associations with the songs that came out in 2015 and 2016 if you guys can't <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't <laughs> I feel like there's like certain years figured that part out yet. I pay but... attention to more. There's like certain years where like I pay attention yeah. or like I go back and it's like wow, all this stuff from this year was great. Mhm. Mm I'm also going to be staying in 2013 for this pick, but Lee Young Hyun's V Lee Young Hyun is probably, or yeah, she is definitely most known for her single Wa, which I'm pretty sure was her debut song. But do not forget the fever dream that is V. The music video is basically about a ghost who traps and haunts a dude because she wants to marry him, probably. Oh my. The entire look of this music video is just camp and it's, it's glorious. But you should be aware, this song is not gonna be for everybody because I know many people think that it sounds really grating because her vocals are just kind of weird in this one. Like it came out in 2013. It sounds like a dance song that could have come out in like 2005 in a way, <laughs> but you should still definitely look at the music video because like there's zombie brides in it and one of them does a cartwheel and it's just glorious, okay? Go watch the music video, it's okay. I will allow it if you dislike the song. I'm fine with it, I personally love the song. But if you hate it, that's okay. But please watch the music video, it's just, it's such a good music video. <laughs> it's just fun. Yes. My favorite thing also is that she got married recently. It was like a year or so ago. Oh, I don't, I don't know if we talked about that. Yeah, she, she actually did get married. Oh, that's so good for her. I love that. Her wedding dress did not look anything like the music video one, by the way, in case you were wondering. <laughs> she, it's way more toned down. Yeah, the music video one is very like over the top and old school, sexy. It's a lot of leg. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. My next pick is Dr. Bebe by Pentagon, and that came out just this year, actually, at the beginning of the year. And it's kind of a weird one all around because I do not like the music video. And to be honest, I didn't even like the song that much when it first came out, but 
I listened to the title track along with the rest of the album a few times and I ended up really liking the title track but without the music video in my mind and that's just because it makes me very uncomfortable the whole premise but I mean it kind of works with the theme and concept that they were going for they're all in a mental hospital going crazy and there's just a lot of uncomfortable imagery that I just I'm not a fan of that Halloween honestly isn't even like my favorite time because of all the weird imagery that goes around like my Instagram feed is just full of makeup artists and severed limbs and I don't like Mm. it I'm not gonna lie but the dance cuts are really great and it's a really well done music video so I do recommend despite all of that there we go so my third one came out in 2013. It was Hate You by Ladies Code. It's very haunting for a couple of different reasons, but I heard the song first and I liked the track. So then later I went to the music video and I was like, wow, this is really pretty. Unfortunately, a lot of people hate this music video, which is very sad, but it's very Halloween. Mm. Uh, big, the big thing that made me kind of angry about why people say bad things is that after the music video, people cited hate you like the music video as the reason why it happened they said it was like karma oh Oh. like you were messing with oh my stuff like that so then you kind of deserved it people there were a lot of mean comments made about ladies code back in the day (laughs) like that is terrible there were a lot of garbage things but i'm a huge fan of ladies code so i will fight y'all but it is very haunting and i just really appreciate it especially uh juni like she has a rap in there and it's very good i love listening to it because she she doesn't really have a lot of killing points in the music like that, where it's just like so good. It's just perfect. So if you've not listened to that, I highly recommend it. It's very, it's very good for them. I really love the intro, like, narration that the dude does. There's also later when it's, like, in the music video where, like, he basically is dubbed over by the girls with the music video. Yes, it's so good. I love it. Yeah, it's all, I love how on beat it is with, like, the cut in the visuals. It's just, oh, so perfect. Mm. And then, like, Risei, when she's in the garden with the doll and she's just sitting in the chair. Yes. <laughs> so pretty. <laughs> yes. Keeping with kind of old songs, Epic High's Don't Hate Me, which came out in 2012. The song itself doesn't really sound very spooky, but the music video is really great. There is a lot of children in the Don't Hate Me music video, but they're all wearing costumes, and it's great, because you can see, like, your normal superhero costumes, but then you also see, like, 2012-related K-pop costumes, and it's just so cute, and there's a lot of chaos. The Don't Hate Me music video is just chaos, and the song is really, really, really good, and fun, and upbeat, and you should go listen to it, if you have the time. That was my deep, insightful talk. So this song that I'm going to talk about next, Not By The Moon by GOT7, is another 2020 release. And I have not liked a GOT7 title track since Home Run, so I was pleasantly surprised with this song, which is kind of funny because I saw quite a few people say that they didn't like it. I don't know why necessarily like I don't I don't see anything about it that's particularly like dislike worthy but that's that's my opinion of course and the reason I put this in here is because the video is very fantastical it feels like a fairy tale k-drama but it's super pretty it has a lot of velvets and marbles and stuff like that but my one thing with it is that all of the members but especially Jackson have this ridiculous face filter on and they look like wax statues and maybe that was purposeful since it was a fairy tale video like it could kind of go with the theme concept i guess but it's just very noticeable and i don't like that particularly but i really like the song if you are not the biggest fan of god seven i feel like it does kind of well maybe that's why people didn't like it because it does kind of feel like they strayed away from their usual sound but um i'm okay with that i didn't like the stuff they've come out with in the past four years so (laughs) that's just Again, a personal opinion. Um, And the other one I want to talk about quick from their older brother group, 2PM, is My House. And this song came out in 2015. Another very fantastical one. It's set in a ball and there's so many pretty dresses and the members look really great. There's kind of an element of Cinderella, but also werewolves. And there's a sinister twist that you don't really see coming. So I very much 
recommend this one. Also, I don't think I've ever mentioned this, but I am a huge Junho fangirl. I will watch slash listen to anything he is in, <laughs> but his hair in this music video is terrible. It's this weird orangey coral <laughs> and it just, it doesn't match his skin tone in the slightest. And I don't know why they decided to go with that because it doesn't feel like a very fairy tale color type thing either. Like he looks good. I'm not going to say he looks bad. I just, I don't think the color suited him very much. Mm. But yeah, also, side note, this song kind of went viral in Korea at the beginning of this year, which is crazy because, like I said, 2015, so five years old. And because of that, uh, JYP Entertainment, not JYP himself, released a concert version of it, which is really cool because that was not previously released. And so, yeah, those are my two kind of fantasy fairy tale picks for this episode. Quick add to 2PM. You should look at Heartbeat if you want something a bit more overdramatic, but yet low-key spoopy. Heartbeat. Just, 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 Just look that up. And I think that was their first comeback after Jay Park left? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Just a little trivia for you. And now for my very last pick, which is Very Very's Tag Tag Tag, which came out last year. And it's a very cute hide and seek game at first in the music video, but then around the last minute of it, it turns into kind of modern horror, where one of the members is holding up his phone to take a picture of others, and the camera picks up another face. Like it sort of like tags that it sees two faces. And like, he also like shines it down a dark hallway and it also picks up. And the reason why this was a big pick of mine, this was like when I was putting my list together, this was one because a couple years ago, I went to a place called the Washoe Club and it's known for being very haunted, very scary, like violent ghosts. It's very famous. It's in Virginia City in Nevada. And one of the things that happened while I was there was that we were encouraged to, you know, sort of like hold up your phones and ooh, maybe ghosts will scratch you or something. And when I held up my mm-hmm. phone, it's just like with the music video, it kind of looked down like the hallway that was dark and like it was registering faces. And there were a couple different times where that happened. So <laughs> that's why it's kind of like a big pick for me. It's very close to real life. So yeah, this was some of our Halloween spooktacular K-pop recommendations. But these are definitely not all the kind of weird, kind of creepy, kind of scary K-pop music videos that exists out there. So if you want to see even more song recommendations, you can check out our script for this episode because... We wrote up a lot more songs than the ones that we talked about, but if we were to go through every single song that came to mind, we would be here for way too long. We also have a Spotify playlist from our old Halloween spooktacular from our Tumblr page last year, which we will also link if you want to just have some good K-pop spoopy vibes on your playlists. And lastly, on Instagram, we're gonna do a spoopy week where we count down some of our favorite Halloween-themed K-pop songs, most of which did not fit into this episode, and it starts tomorrow. So you should definitely go check out our Instagram feed. But before we give you all of our social media links, let's find out the thrilling answer to last episode's trivia question. Last time I asked, what year did SM Entertainment's Halloween party begin? As in the famous annual party we know it as now. And the answer is 2013. So, JR, you were correct. What? Yes, you got the correct answer. I thought year. so. However, it's not the same as it is now, but it led to what we know it is now. So in 2013, first of all, original reason was that it was to celebrate the five-year anniversary of the SM Town live tour. And so it was basically to be a party to celebrate both at the same time, but costumes were more optional. It was just more to celebrate a big thing. But everyone knows Shiny's role for creating it into what we know it as today. So first of all... The members had a fan sign earlier in the day and they were wearing these costumes, such as Onu was Freddy Krueger, uh, Jonghyun was Naruto, Ki was Piccolo from Dragon Ball Z, and Taemin was Marilyn Manson. So they dressed up in those costumes, but then they decided to go to the party with them. Now, in case you're wondering about Minho, 
Minho was actually filming a drama at the time, so he could not attend the party, but there were quite a few others who couldn't either. So people at the party were missing, such as Super Junior's Leo Wook, FX's Victoria Su Lee were missing, Dong Bang Shinki were missing, but it was still a good party to go to. Some people did dress up for the Halloween besides of Shiny, such as there were some members of SNSD who went in little costumes, but they did not go over the top like Shiny did. But because... Shiny went over the top and they had a lot of fun with it. Then obviously press pictures came out and a lot of fans really liked it. So then it established the Halloween tradition from then on where everyone wanted to dress up in the best costumes that they could. And my personal favorite picture from this, there's one where it's Shiny <laughs> posing in their costumes with Tonge who's looking completely normal. <laughs> yeah, it is just the funniest thing because obviously people were not expecting them to go all out. You were not meant to go all out because once again, it was mainly to celebrate SM Town, but still, that's how we know it as today. Fun. What's your favorite year of costumes for SM? Ooh. I don't remember any of them. I know, I don't remember specific years, but I was so impressed with Chanyeol's Iron Man costume. Yes, he went. that's who I was thinking of, yeah. Okay, because <laughs> it like moved and everything. It was a very impressive. Not he moved, but the mask moved. You know, it was more than your average party city get up. My other favorite was, I believe it was 2015 when Onyu came as Colonel Sanders from KFC. <laughs> oh, yeah, and then yeah, wasn't yeah. that also the same year when Key came as Ronald McDonald? The, I would not be surprised. And I, I'm sure everyone knows that one because it became a meme. Yeah, exactly. And they were fighting over a bucket <laughs> of chicken. <laughs> Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed the episode, then please make sure to rate, subscribe, follow, and tell your friends about us. If you want to interact with us or just see more of our content, then you can follow us on Twitter at Kpop Sunbase or on our other social media platforms, which will be in the description. Also, don't forget that our next episode comes out on November 1st, 2020. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Annyeong.